All right, so I'm walking into the FedEx station now. I'm gonna give you guys a little quick glimpse of what it's like when I walk in, what my truck looks like, etc. So I'm gonna have to walk through security, so I'm gonna put you in my lunchbox. All right, so I just found out that apparently FedEx package handlers can't bring their phone in. Well, there's reason number one not to be a FedEx package handler, but <laughs> drivers can bring their phones in, so don't worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. but I'm gonna show you the inside of my truck. I'm gonna show you how it's loaded and how I load it to make sure that I can deliver as efficiently as possible. So here we go. So FedEx and UPS are very much alike. I don't know about Amazon. Um, I don't feel like they have a very good system at all, at least from what I've seen when I'm out there. Um, I usually see guys that are kind of lost in the sauce and that's no offense to them. Their system's just not really up to par yet. But with FedEx, your deliveries will go in order. So you can see 1006. Now they're not always perfect order. So I might do 1006 and then I might do 1018 and then 1015. But for the most part, they're actually gonna be in order. So I'll do 1004, 1006, 1015, 18. And it doesn't go every number. So it's not gonna be one, two, three, four it allows room for extra stops. And you'll see um, all of my stickers are facing out. That's something that took me a little while to get my loader to do. They used to be on the top, on the side, all over. Um, I used positive reinforcement. I used gift cards. I got here early and I encouraged them that they were doing a great job every time they put it on the outside of the box. And when they didn't put it on the outside of the box, I would do it right in front of them and be like, thank you so much for every box that you put it on the outside. It saves me so much time trying to look for that box. And sometimes they'd kind of roll their eyes at me, but over a period of like a month or so, every single box now is faced perfectly. Like for the last six months that I've been at this contract, every box is faced perfectly. And one thing that I've started teaching them too, <clears throat> and they do a really good job about it, I still have to help them occasionally is they put if the box is on the bottom floor. So if there's not enough room up here, they'll put them on the bottom floor. Then they put the sticker on top so I can still see which box it is. And you'll notice, too, how it says FL. When you're looking in your scanner, a lot of these boxes actually say FL. So I know it's on the floor, but some of them aren't gonna be on the shelves. So they just, they have to be on the floor. So you always know to check the shelves first, then check the floor. But if you're looking at your scanner and it says FL, you know you can go directly to the floor to look for it. So <clears throat> this is a really light day for me, just so you guys know. It's one of the reasons I'm taking time to film today. But usually your big boxes are gonna be on the side of your truck. Um, there was a lady sweeping, so I got them out of her way. So all of mine are right here. There's not a whole lot of them. And then you'll have what they call your smalls. All your smalls are basically all your like Lululemon, your t-shirts, your envelopes, um, anything that's kind of floppy and doesn't have any structure to it, they're gonna put in these bins. And I'll show you in a minute how I organize those and then how I load them in my truck. All right. All right, so I'll show you how I organize these guys. So what I do is I form like a semicircle. So five goes there, seven goes there, four, five, two. All right, now that I've got all my packages in a semicircle, all of the smalls are in proper order. Now what I do is I take the bins, I start at the highest number, so my eights, then I grab my sevens, sixes, five. And like I said, guys, this is a light day. Normally this would take me like two bins, but it's a pretty light day. And that's one of the reasons I'm filming. Okay, so now that we've got all of our smalls right here, what we'll do is we'll grab one and we'll look for the exact number. This one's 1518. 
and we'll find exactly where it goes. So 15, 19, boom, put it next to it. Now, not every single one of these packages is in the exact order, but what I always do is I look for the closest number. And then, so like, so for instance, since this is 1518, I always put it right in front of 1519. So at least I know that if I have 1518 and I, it's not in order, I'll always look for the next number and then it's right there. So um, 1001, boom, goes up front, 3515. So then, um, yeah, so there's 3507. 3524 so i'll just shove this between there <clears throat> and i'll do that for the whole bin so then a lot of guys will spend a lot of time looking for packages and sometimes the problem is they're not on your truck sometimes you will get missed loads so what i do is i take the extra five minutes i load my truck perfectly literally there's not one package that's out of order or that is not like clearly right where like in a general area of where it should be so like i said some of these aren't perfect but if they're not perfect they're right next to where they should be whereas with all these smalls they're in perfect order so when i'm out of my route if it literally takes me more than 20 seconds to find a package i know that it's not on my truck so i just give up and then sure enough at the end of the day it's not on my truck it was misloaded um, it's on somebody else's truck it happens but then that way i'm not spending five minutes at every stop looking for my packages Okay, two more things that I forgot. Um, one is when, when you're loading, you wanna make sure that you tilt your boxes. So I'll show you what I mean. So your boxes should be tilted out on the ledge. So that way there's an angle to it. So that way when you hit a bump, they're not gonna fall off. Um, obviously if there's, if there's just one box and nothing on top, it's fine because it does have a lip. But if you have boxes like this that are like that, and then there's boxes on top. As soon as you hit a pothole or something, these boxes will just come sliding off. Cardboard is very slippery. So you wanna make sure they're on the ledge like this. And then that way they stay pushed back to the back of the truck. And then other thing is I always load all my smalls first because sometimes what'll happen is you'll place all your extra big boxes. They're called ICUs here at FedEx. I can't remember the technical re the technical term for what ICU stands for, but it basically just means they're too large to go on the belt. So that way they don't come down the belt and smash all these smaller packages. But sometimes what will happen is you'll take these larger packages and you'll put them in the middle in order. And then you try to start doing your smalls and then you're literally like tripping over them the whole day. Whereas if you do all your smalls and then you load your packages from the front to the back, your truck can be completely full, but it doesn't matter because if you go in order, you're gonna do 1000s first, and then you're gonna do 1500s, and then you're gonna do 2000s, 2500s, 3000s, 3500s, 4000s, 4500s, and so on. So that way there's packages on the floor, but you're not getting back there until the rest of it's already cleared off. Um, I've talked to FedEx, I've talked to my manager. I think, it, especially during peak season, it should go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, 4,500. That way you're actually going back at an even rate because sometimes during Christmas, what will happen is you've got a 1,500 that's all the way back here and you've got packages that are just stacked right here. So it would be better if you went one, two, three, four, but you know, it's a work in progress. It's it's a really good system. It works pretty well. So I, I understand they're kind of like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, but during the holidays, it is kind of annoying. So anyways, um, I'll leave you with that. I'm gonna finish loading these large packages and then I'll show you guys what it looks like and then I'll get on the road. All right guys, so we've officially got the entire truck loaded. I've got my smalls loaded. I've got my ICUs, my large packages loaded. I'll show you what that looks like. Again, today is a, a light day, but all the packages are in order, so I'm not gonna have to get to any of those packages before I've done the entire front of the truck. So these are all ones and twos. Those are six, seven, eights, and nine. Uh, there's no nines on this truck today, but anyways, so that's what it looks like. Um, I'll show you kind of what it looks like as we go throughout the day. It's gonna be a pretty easy day. Anyways, I have 132 stops and 162 packages and that's also including five pickups so it's actually only like 126 127 stops um, there's one 
pick up on there that's not supposed to be on there. And so anyways, uh, it's gonna be a pretty light day, but I will catch you on the road. All right, guys, so one thing I'm gonna do throughout the day is just show you a few things that I love about this job. Um, things that I think a lot of people maybe don't realize and then things that I think are kind of unusual from most jobs. And one of them is the fact that you can pretty much start whenever you want to. Now, obviously when I say pretty much, I'm, there's some flexibility there. So once you gain rapport with your contractor, they trust you as an independent contractor to deliver your route in an efficient manner manner, and be done at a reasonable time. When I say reasonable, honestly, as long as you're back by like 10 p.m., nobody bothers you, nobody cares. Um, obviously, you try not to make it back that late, but for instance, I knew I was gonna be filming today. I had to buy a few things for my GoPro. I took time to film, you know, my truck and I'm, I'm new to filming, so it took longer than it should have. I stopped and started the camera a lot, but I'll show you guys real quick, just to kind of show you how this works and, ooh, let's see if we can get a better lighting. Okay, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up on, but if you can see down there, that's my first stop. Once I press complete on the map, it'll take me to my second stop and then my third and fourth and fifth and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty good system. The nice thing about it is you can kind of, you can kind of control it. So like every once in a while, you know, it'll be off. It'll, it'll have me go here and then it'll have me go right next door, but like 10 houses later. So you can kind of skip around a little bit, but it's super efficient. Back when I started, you had MapQuest papers, literally a chunk of MapQuest papers and stop by stop by stop. And you would be like on the fifth page and found out that you had a stop where you were an hour ago, but it was on the left hand side of the road and they only want you to deliver on the right. Well, that makes sense on like a busy highway or a busy road, but it would be like on a cul-de-sac or something crazy. So anyways, it's a pretty good system. Um, I'm going to get started. I'll show you guys a few like point of view as I'm delivering and then I'll kind of show you my truck, um, show you from, you know, the start to how it ends up and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, so I just got to my first house that has a heavy package. One thing I hear a lot of drivers complain about, I've seen it on Facebook, I've seen it on Instagram, I've seen it on YouTube, is they complain about the heavy boxes. They complain about the Chewy and just these like oversized heavy boxes. Um, and I remember when I first started, it kind of drove me crazy too. There's some days where it's just like, it's the last thing you wanna do is deliver a heavy box. But then I kind of shifted my mindset and I realized, you know what, on an average day, it's about 10 boxes per day. So 10 stops that are gonna kind of suck. And then once you're done with those 10, it's over. So the way I look at it is, you know, this is only like my fourth or fifth stop and I've got a heavy box. So boom, I've already got one knocked out of the day. Now, like I said, today's a light day. So I've only got like six or seven. Some days I might have 20, but still 20, it's like, 20 stops out of 200, it's it's usually about 10% of your day. So I'm gonna deliver this box real quick and I'll have one knocked out and then uh, we'll have a whole lot of light ones to do and then we'll have one more heavy one and then a whole lot of light ones. So it's really easy when you change your mindset and you get a little bit of a workout as well. So here we go. Okay, there you have it guys. I'm not gonna lie, that one was pretty heavy. I looked on the label, it said 120 pounds. I have a dolly, I chose not to use it. And it is what it is, on to the next stop. So, quick little lesson. Uh, 
I'm at these parcel lockers and Amazon, FedEx, UPS, USPS, pretty sure they do as well. We all have um, different codes so we can put boxes in there and so that way the customer knows their package is secured. Now, a lot of these customers at this apartment, for whatever reason, their names aren't in the system and this apartment's kind of annoying to deliver to, but that's our job. Well, I just got here and there was a package here I was gonna show you. That guy was just walking away. He was really mad because UPS just dropped it off and they just put it on the floor right by the door. And this door is open like most of the day. So anybody could just walk by and grab it. So, and there's no cameras in here. A lot of these will have cameras. This one doesn't have any. So uh, UPS, this is the one time I can tell you do better. Those guys are usually pretty good, but not now. All right, so thanks to Amazon, a lot of these apartments have these package lockers. The only unfortunate thing, I don't know if you guys can see that, is a lot of the customers here don't have their name in the system. So it's kind of annoying, but anybody that does, it saves us so much time. And then that way you know nobody's gonna steal your locker, or excuse me, steal your package off your front door. But this just saves us so much time. There are, there are days when I'm able to come here and deliver like 20 packages in like 15 minutes. And for an apartment complex, that's pretty fast, uh, especially for this one, because it's really confusing. So anyways, I only was able to deliver two today. We'll deliver the rest by foot. You guys, uh, pickup number one. I have five pickups today. And actually this one accounts for two of them. They, for some reason, they put it in twice. All right, stop three done on stop four, which is right there. So I got pretty lucky. All my pickups are right next to each other. Takes me about 10 minutes total, depending on the day. Look at this guy. You're gonna be in my YouTube video, okay? <laughs> and this is my fourth and final stop. Ooh. All right, I'll grab these real quick. All right guys, so update. Um, we've been going for just over an hour. Um, I'll show you the truck real quick. We've done 20 stops. So we did all of the 1000s, all the 1500s, and almost all of the 2000s. These are all the pickups, um, not all of them. Those are the first amount of pickups. That was from the fourth stop. And then the other pickups are there in the back. Um, that way they're kind of out of my way, but I've only got two left on the 2000 and 2500 shelf. So um, I checked the app and we are at 27.5 stops per hour, which is pretty good for me trying to record and something I've never done before. Um, I usually try to do the first two hours of my route at 35 stops per hour. And then from then I hit coast at 30 stops per hour for the rest of the day, which is usually about three, four hours. So um, today's my goal is to get it done by 8.30. We started at three, that's five and a half hours. Plenty of time, that's with recording and everything. So I'll update you guys um, here about in an hour. I wanna get some stuff done. So I'm gonna kind of haul ass, get some stops done, and then I'll catch up with you then. All right guys, so checking back in with you, it's now been just over two hours. I have done 53 stops. Um, it doesn't look like much more and that's because of my pickups. I've done a few of the 3000s. Um, I did them out of order, but I did quite a few of the 7000s and I did some of the 6000s. So the only thing that sucks about getting started this late and it's nice to have that flexibility, but when you do get started this late, at least for my route, I have about five to seven businesses that close at between five and 6 p.m. So I wanted to make sure I got those done. So I raced around my whole entire route. So then it slows down your delivery rate by quite a bit. So I've now got 91 stops left. And that means I can do that in about three hours. So I'll still be done by 8.30. I started delivering at three, so it's still not a big deal. So here's what it looks like after two hours. I will update you guys in about an hour. Hey 
Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so it's been one more hour. I have done 35 in the past hour. So I have 54 left, 54, 53 left. I think there's one on there that's not supposed to be on there. It's that one that wasn't, it's not on my truck. Uh, remember earlier, we couldn't find it. So anyways, this is what my shelves look like. We're getting pretty close to done. We've done a lot of the bigger ones. All of shelf four, almost all of shelf three. One of these packages was just way out of order. Every once in a while you'll find that. You'll be doing stops and then it'll want you to drive like three miles for one stop. So basically this package should be like way over in another section. So we'll get it done. But anyways, that's where we're at. Um, I'm going to get back to running. I've got about two hours left and uh, I'll catch up with you then. All right, guys. So I'm done. Um, that last little bit took just a little bit longer. It is 825, a little bit longer than I thought it would take. It was just more spread out. So um there was only like 10 stops and like five or six different communities so it was like driving almost a mile between every stop which the one bad thing too about having a light day is you still do all the same amount of driving you still zigzag through every single neighborhood you still turn at every light you still do all the like you put almost the exact same miles on your truck every single day the difference is you just make less money so I'm a, I'm a big fan of like 160 to 200 on a regular day. And then when peak season comes, I'm like, I'm happy about the craziness because that just means more money. So anyways, I'll show you my truck. Um, there's that one stop I didn't get. That's a pickup. The rest is all pickups. And then this one right here is what's called an O2. It goes to an apartment, but it did not have an apartment number. So that's it for now. Uh, we're going to drive back to the station and then I'll... That way they know to put the right apartment number on there. All right, guys, that's it. We just got back. Um, so at this point, you just open your door and then the unloaders will unload this truck and it'll be good to go for tomorrow. So as you can see, since it's a little bit later, all the trucks are already back, already unloading them. We've only got one guy missing. He came in after me, which is crazy because he had way more stops, but yeah, that's how it works. Thanks for joining me on my trip. Uh, stay tuned for some bonus footage. Okay guys, I'm back. So. I want to get out of here. It's my last day here, but I want to tell you guys some of the things that I love about this job. And the number one thing that I love about this job is freedom. Absolute freedom. I am not one that loves to be micromanaged. I am not one that loves to be constantly checked in on to have managers that inquire how my day is going. It drives me nuts. FedEx ground, especially my contractors, all the ones I've ever worked for, they don't ask you questions. They don't text you. They don't check in with you. They don't bother you. You just come to work, you do your job, and then you leave. You can take as long as lunch as you want. You don't have to take a lunch. You can take a break if you want. You don't have to take a break. You can take 10 breaks throughout the day. Like if you literally, if it's a nice day and you see a nice park and you want to go lay in the grass, go lay in the grass, like park your truck somewhere safe, turn on the hazards, like lock your truck, whatever. But there's so many things that you can do that you just couldn't do with another job. I will get a haircut on my route if I want to. I will drop off my dry cleaning on my route and then pick it up on my way home. Just so many things that I couldn't do at a regular, typical nine to five job that I can do here. Another thing that I don't think people realize, sometimes people are like, oh man, you're out really late. And I, I'm not gonna lie to them. I'm not gonna tell them it's, it's a heavy day. When it, it was a light day, I just didn't wanna come in until later. So I'll just be like, yep, sure am. <laughs> but today I got here at 1.30, 1.30 PM. So I got off, it's now like 
So it took me eight hours. And that's because I was trying to record some today as well. But, and I took, I took my time. It was my last day. I said goodbye to businesses. I said goodbye to some of the kids that I like on my route. Uh, certain people, I just took some time to make sure I said goodbye and said, this is probably the last time I'd see them for a while. So people don't realize that once your contractor trusts you, you can pretty much set your own schedule. You can come in when you want to, and you can go as fast or as slow as you want to. Um, the only like hard deadlines are you have to do pickups at a certain time. You have to do businesses before they close and you have to be back to the station at a specific time. Now each station is a little bit different. When I was in Vegas, they wanted me back by like nine, nine thirty. Um, here in Phoenix, they want you back by ten thirty, and that's because that's when their conveyor belt shut off. That's when that shift in. So then those boxes wouldn't get on the outward bound trucks. So, anyways, number one thing I love about this job is the time freedom and the actual freedom of just doing whatever you want. All right, guys, what's up? So I'm back. As you may have noticed. It is a completely different day. Anyways, the next thing I want to talk about is the pay. Um, I'm going to pull it up on my phone because I don't want to give you the wrong numbers, but since yesterday was my last day at FedEx, it wasn't a full week and the last two and a half weeks haven't been full weeks because I was supposed to start three weeks ago at my new job. And every time something happened with my background, like the company they used to hire, it just it was just a mess, but it's finally all cleared up. I'm starting Monday. But so my last full week was a five day work week. I worked Tuesday through Saturday. Um, I try to avoid Sunday and Mondays, um, at least here in Phoenix. Those are the slowest days. And because I was leaving, I had that privilege before that I was working like six days a week. So anyways, five day work week. My total pay was eleven forty four ninety, and I took home $929.63, so $929.63. Now, I know to some of you that seems like not very much money at all. Some people that seems like a lot of money. Um, to me, it's a good amount of money, but the thing is, is the freedom that came with that money. Um, my average time getting to work last that week was probably like 12 p.m. I'm a night person, so I like to take my time in the morning. I'm more of a night owl. So I would literally get up. I would go get a breakfast burrito. Um, I would do a load of laundry. Like sometimes I'd go get my haircut, you know, like I just take my time. So anyways, to me, that's a good amount of money when you're not working more than 40 hours every day. So I'm trying to think of a lot of things at once. Every day I would work about seven and a half hours as my normal. Now, there's a lot of days where I can get done from the time I get to the work to the time I get back, I can do it in seven hours. But I feel like my average with that amount of money, the amount of stops I did is 7.5 hours. So if I got there at noon, I would be back at 7.30 every day. If I got back later, which I did multiple days, I'd get back like eight, 8.30, no big deal. Nine, no big deal. 9.30, not a big deal. And some people are like, oh, that's so late. Well, they don't realize is I do all the signatures first, I do all of the businesses first and then I do all of the perishables first. And I don't mean first as in like first part of my day, but I do them all before like seven or 8 PM signatures. I try to get done before seven just cause I don't want to be knocking on somebody's door. Whereas with like food deliveries and stuff, I still try to get them done early. But if I can't, um, almost everybody I deliver to, they get an email. Like half the time I'm in my truck, I scan a package and I mark it delivered and then I set my scanner down, I grab the package and then I'm walking to the door and somebody's opening the door and they're like, hey, I just got the email. And it's like, are you really that bored? But anyway, so to me, the most important things about this job were the time freedom and you make enough money that there's no stress on your life. So you're not making an exorbitant amount of money, but you're also not stressed financially. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the people. It might sound cheesy. It might sound whatever, but my, one of my favorite things about this job is getting to know the communities that I would deliver to. So one of my favorite things is driving down the road and almost every single day, multiple times a day, you see a kid that's four five, six, seven, eight. They like get their mom and dad's attention and mom look a big truck and then i would always drive by and i'd honk the horn and wave and when i do that 
they would get the biggest kick out of it. Um, sometimes if I could tell the mom or dad was super into like, oh, look at big truck, big truck, you know, like super into it, I would stop and I would let them see my truck. I've had kids get up into my truck. Now, if you work for corporate, it doesn't really matter. Yesterday was my last day, but I would let people get up in my truck, look at my truck. I'd let kids sit in the seat, you know, honk the horn, whatever. Um, that's the best part of my day. And you get to learn people's schedules and stuff. And so I would know like, hey, they're not gonna be home to sign for a package until this time or this, or I know that they work on the weekends or so sometimes I would show up and be like, hey, I know you're not gonna be here tomorrow, yada, yada. So I stopped here early because I wanted to make sure I got it before you went to bed. And they're just like so appreciative. And just building that community of like trust, people start to really appreciate you. and you develop a relationship with these people and it sounds weird, but there's cer certain people you see every day where they're walking their dog and they smile and they wave at you. And it's like, they're part of my day every day. And you get to feel like this kinship between you and you almost feel like friends. So anyways, if you're thinking about a job at FedEx ground, feel free to comment. I can steer you clear of a lot of bad jobs because not every FedEx ground job is, is the same. If I were you, I would try to, I'll just give you a couple pointers. I would try to find a home delivery route because you're mostly doing residential. Um, businesses are fine, but they really don't pay as well. And I've seen some guys on here that work for FedEx ground and like they show their paycheck and it's terrible. Like one guy, I'm not gonna like, I'm not trying to put him down or anything, but he does the same job I do. It's just as hard and he's making $18 an hour. Whereas I usually average $30 an hour. And sometimes during peak season, I'm averaging more like $40 an hour. I had one peak season last year where my average was $48 per hour based on the amount of hours I was putting in based off what I was taking home. No, not taking home my net pay. So I was making like 40, yeah, $45 per hour for my net pay. And then my take home was still like close to 40. So anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I was all over the place. I know it was my first time videoing, but if you want to find out why, why I'm leaving FedEx ground and what I'm doing next, stay tuned for the next video and I will talk to you then.